Hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Views, the podcast where we take a random topic each week and cast views. Although this episode will be a little different, but we'll go into that shortly. Your hosts are me, Dan. And me, Dan. <laughs> no, Dan, second Dan, who are you really? This is Antonio of the Cult Worthy. <laughs> Hello, Dan. <laughs> Yay, I have got a different... Actually, I shouldn't be overjoyed because the reason Antonio is here is because Lou is unfortunately not feeling too great tonight. So get well soon, Lou. Yeah, get well soon. But at the same time, I also kind of think that, hey, it's a new year and New Year's resolutions. I'm wondering if you're looking for a new co-host. Well, think of this as an audition and then we'll we'll probably put a poll out. Although I heard today that I think you've got to start, you have to be a blue tick now to start voting in polls on Twitter. I heard that's the latest rumor anyway. Oh, uh, well, I'm not but, paying for that. But <laughs> I don't know. Do do I have to take my clothes off for this audition? That was that was going to be the, the, the after after episode. Oh, I uh, see. OK, Patreon. Yeah, 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 that's that's it, the behind the paywall. So yeah, so thank you for stepping in. So yeah, so as as I said, Lou, Lou and I were going to do a little brief kind of end of year thing that we were going to get out just before Christmas. He unfortunately is ill. I mentioned it to Antonio, and Antonio said, "Well, I can be on." So I thought, I don't know what episode we're now going to do. It's probably not going to be the one I had in mind. However. Any chance to get, as I called him before, the busiest man in podcasting onto my show is always going to be accepted. Oh, well, thank you for that. Always a pleasure. How are you doing? I'm great. You know, just finishing up the year. We've only got like, what, seven more days left for the most part. Um, eight more days before we're really just into the New Year Eve stuff. So I'm excited. Just Christmas with the family, Christmas getting crazy at work. But uh, I think like what you and I are doing this week, just trying to make a short and sweet possible episode so we can enjoy our holiday before we really just take off in the new year doing new material and, and new episodes, right? Absolutely. And that's what I was going to say, actually. And I'll put it out in a tweet. So I decided that, yeah, this year we are going to take the couple of weeks off. I think just recharge, chill. Been a lot going on in my life. I'm sure there's a, there's a lot going on in your life. I know mm -hmm. Lou's been busy as well. And I thought, you know what? No, make the statement, do a two week break. I might get a little couple of bits and pieces out here. So you never know, you might get a couple of sneak short episodes out after this one. But yeah, basically, Casting Views, as you know it, will be taking a break until probably like the second week of January. So we'll see you then. But don't go anywhere just yet, because we're still here. Right. I'm OK as well. I'm just shattered. It's, it's this time of the year. I just feel tired all the time. You know, the it's dark it's cold it gets dark so early like where i'm at in in utah it gets dark at 5 15 5 30 so you really don't get much daylight and i am a creature of the sun i am not a nocturnal creature anymore the second it gets dark i'm yawning man and my eyes start getting heavy and it's it sucks because that's when my kids feel the most energized <laughs> yeah and it's the same here it's around sort of half four half four it starts getting dark i finish work at half five by the time i get home at six and and yeah you kind of this time this time of the year if if i go out straight after work i'm fine but if i if i enter sort of go once i'm in through the front door at that time i just don't want to leave the house again it's too cold it's too dark and we've had crazy weather actually so we had snow about a week ago and it's been minus eight here which i, I want to say it was like 17 fahrenheit yeah, that's kind of where we're hanging out right now, too. Yeah, but the last couple of days now, it's jumped right back up to around 50. And so that's all gone. Finally, the snow's yeah, not gone. us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's, it's, it's gray and rainy and windy, so it's not nice. Well, that's just England, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've had also a roller coaster week. So I finally felt Christmassy. Sunday, myself and my partner, we went to London. We saw a carol concert at the Royal Albert Hall, which was quite good fun. It was participative so they made you sing which was <gasps> quite fun yeah so i'm not going to do it now though so i was all fine and christmasy then today i felt like i'd regressed back to like 2002 because for the first time ever i ran out of data on my phone oh my goodness really <laughs> yeah i don't know why i don't know why so i ran out of data so that put me in a in a foul mood 
I haven't yet to do that. Um, and I've got tons of photos, and I think I only have like the 64 gig one. I don't really fill in my phone up. But what I did realize when I first got into podcasting and I started listening to everyone else's podcasts is making sure that I didn't have the auto download on because every time I'd listen right. to one of your yes. shows, I was downloading it and I was listening to so many shows. And one day when I'm like, oh, I think I'm losing space. Half my phone was just everyone's podcast. So yeah, I fixed that. <laughs> yeah. But then on the plus side though, when I got home tonight, I realized that I'm about four days behind on my advent calendar. So that cheered me up. So I was able to get four days of chocolate. Yeah, so. four days of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Even though we're adults and we can have chocolate whenever we want, it's just the <laughs> thought of, oh, I get four extra pieces. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. An advent calendar is you're allowed to have it. It's like, yeah, there's no question about it. Whereas if if I go, you know, and buy it, it's like, oh, should I? I shouldn't really. I've already had like ten pieces today. <laughs> <laughs> but but right. So I kind of we'll get to another little chit chat. But I was initially with Lou, just going to talk about a couple of things. So yeah, I've literally just tweeted it out. Um. But we, as a podcast, hit 4K downloads yesterday, which I'm chuffed about. Congratulations. No, thank you. It's, that um, is a landmark. It, yeah, it really is. And and it's, this marks our first, well, it'd be the same with you, actually, wouldn't it? It's our first full calendar year as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in a way, I kind of really hit the reset button on my podcast in January because my earlier episodes, it started in September and October of last year, up until Christmas time, I wasn't really 100% pleased with it. I was still learning how to do it. And I felt the podcast really hit its stride right around January, February, when I kind of got better with the sound equipment, had a better idea of what the format and the context was going to be. And so I unpublished those first episodes before January, February of last year. And they will be on a Patreon once I get that up and going. But, I mean, I've, I've been listening to you almost around the same time that I started off. And what I was always envious about your show and what I love about Casting Views is that even as you've improved your audio quality and your format over the last calendar year and, and plus, the rapport between you and Lou has always been what's the appeal of the show, right? The fact that you guys pick very interesting topics and not just interesting to you, just interesting topics in general. The first one I listened to was like cryptocurrency. And I think that's kind of fun because you started with more of like the baseline topics that a lot of people were talking about. And then you ventured off into the things that really fascinate you. And that's where I feel your show really got more interesting. So it's no surprise that you've seen such growth over the last few months because each episode to me has been more entertaining because the topics have been more entertaining. Cheers. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think when we first started, it was, yeah, what's kind of the, the obvious things to talk about, especially I would say for me anyway, I'm not sure about how it, how, how it comes across as a listener or, or, or what Lou would have said. For me, the last, I would say actually the last quarter of this year, we've, I felt like we've hit another groove because we felt a lot more, we, we've gone into a lot more almost like freestyle conversations in a lot of our episodes, which is kind of yes. what... I wanted to do with him anyway, but it it felt like at the start it's like no, we're coming with these details, and now it's a lot less. You know, we've got our bullet points. What I want to hit anyway, but how we get around those is a journey that we'll see how it ends up in the episode. What point did you sit down to the microphone and feel comfortable finally? Like what part of the year or what episode? Were you able to just sit down and say, okay, this is what I do. I am a podcaster and I feel comfortable podcasting. Joe, you know I think it was probably when we started doing the collaborations, which I know feels a bit of a, maybe an, an obvious thing to say, but I would say towards, I would say the comfortable element came. So looking at it, it was around April time. I think that's when we really started hitting all the collaborations with the, the, mm -hmm. our little group. But I would say one of the, one of the ones that really kicked it off, we took a little break, I think, and then we came back for season two where we did like an unusual month. So we did unusual laws, unusual medical conditions. And that felt like where Lou and I could be a bit more, uh, kind of a little bit more of the conversations that we would have, especially like the unusual laws. It was just us two having a bit of a laugh and hopefully, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the people 
um, listening we'd have the last. So I think it was when we started doing doing those kind of things. I did have, and I think, and, and this is where I've got to thank you for some stuff as well. So it's it's quite it's quite um, appropriate you're on the show because I've got some thanks that that I'll say out after. I did change my mic, which probably. Well, I'm not saying it's not a good thing to do. It's, it's not a terrible thing to do, but I, I did it and I, I had some audio problems midway through the year. It may have been just after that. So I went through a real, I've gone through a couple of, um, what's what's the word? Is it not crises, but real self-doubt about the podcast a couple of times, actually, if I'm honest with you. And it's yeah. mainly been around kind of like the audio because I thought we got it good. And then mine just, I had to do a lot of work and yeah, a couple of video calls with you <laughs> sort of late <laughs> night to, to help out. Yeah, how about yourself? What was the same, if I throw the question back at you? I would say around the same time, man. I would say March and April, especially March, because the first week of March, I did a collaboration with Brendan from Unsheft. He was my first guest from the Brain Trust uh, on the show to just talk about food and movies, and it was kind of fun. But I already kind of knew him. And I had you next where we talked about the video nasties. And I felt that was the conversation that really made me comfortable as a conversationalist and a host, because it wasn't like a scripted plotted out thing. Like Brendan and I had, we had a list of movies we wanted to talk about with the video nasties. You and I just had a full on conversation about censorship. We didn't really have any facts drawn up. We just had a list of movies that had been banned, and we barely touched on those. We had a person-to-person conversation about censorship in our countries, and that mm-hmm. got me the most comfortable just having a conversation with someone that wasn't plotted already. And then the one that really finalized it for me was the very first episode of April, Animation April, with Josh Scar from the Talking Smack podcast, we did an episode on a Goofy movie where we're talking about a children's animated film, but we were talking about it as dads who grew up with these, this film as sons. And that transition from son to dad and how that movie has gone along with us on that journey and how relevant it was. And it was such a heartfelt, emotional conversation. And for months, almost a year, it was the number one downloaded episode, and it's the episodes that to this day I get the best feedback from. So I would say that that March to April is really when I started feeling comfortable having guests. And ever since that episode, I haven't had an episode without a guest. I went from a review podcast like what the Movie Wire does to a film conversational and analysis podcast. So I really changed the dynamic of the show in that month of April. And I don't think I'll ever go back. I remember saying to you, actually, I, I distinctly remember messaging you a couple of times when you did the things outside of the normal reviewing that I really enjoyed hearing. Yeah, hearing your brain, how it works in, in things that weren't strictly cult movies or talking right. about a review of a cult movie, which is, you know, if I look back, I, I'm going to call it a regret, but, you know, it's, a regret is quite a, a, what's the word, an emotional word. The first couple of guests we had on, I think it worked well for for Brendan. We had Brendan from Unsheft in Food Month. But when we had you on, I had you talking about movies the first time. Mm -hmm. And it was actually, I think after that, I I said to myself, I kind of feel not not that that was unfair, but I think, you know, I wanted then guests who come on to us to have almost like the casting views experience rather than just to come on to talk about something, you know, that's in your comfort zone, as it were. So yes. obviously we had you on a couple of weeks ago to talk about McDonald's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's, it's a chance for you to talk about something different. We just recently had Justin, you mentioned him as well, yeah. um, talking about urban legends or cryptids. Cryptids. We, we've, had, <laughs> we've had this There was discussion. a debate there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, still, it's still raw. We won't go into that for the listeners. But yeah, so I, th- I think that was also another turning point where I said to myself, yeah, I, you know, the it's, it's about the podcast is a specific thing and that's why people listen to it and yeah it was about giving people the opportunity to do something different that they're normally associated with i think where possible and it helps when they're already fans of the show because they understand the conversational dynamic and the topics i think you and i have both had guests on this show and not that they were bad guests but 
sometimes you get a guest on that kind of has like their own agenda before they even understand what your show is about. And that was a real educational piece for me of like, okay, I have to understand that not every person I have on my show has even listened to my show and know what it's about. So that was a good educational piece for me to be a better host of, I have to learn to be flexible to match the guests' energy and dynamic. Yeah. And, you know, and, and talking about guests, like I said, this was the year of, of collaborations and I've, you know, I've really enjoyed doing that. And when I mentioned that earlier, I think what collaborations has done has given me the bit of confidence in terms of, especially the ones where I've worked on it because it's, it's a natural match, as you've said, it's, mm -hmm. it's about, what's the word? There's a bit of, is it pride? Someone bit, you know, accepting to come onto your show to, to spend time with you. I think it is, you know, is, is a great feeling. Yeah. Well, it's a sense of accomplishment, right? Yeah. When, when we both started, we never thought in a million years we'd have guests on our show, let alone guests that would want to come onto our show. <laughs> I, I, I really thought it was just going to be me talking into a microphone, staring at a blank wall for however long this podcast was going to go on. Now I have a studio behind me where people actually <laughs> come and sit down and have conversations with me every week. That was not part of the plan. It just happened. And, and that fact that it happened in the first year for me is what makes me so happy that I made that leap into this, this medium. How about you, man? Yeah, like I said, my journey for one of, you know, I know it's a cliche term, but has gone in stages. So first it was, I honestly, you know, and people say it, but I honestly thought I might get five people listen to it because initially I was going to do it on my own and I thought it'll be my partner. It might be Lou and it might be um, somebody at work. I thought I'd, I'd do that. Then obviously got Lou on and realized, no, we could do something. You know, we could do a really good podcast for this. So it was once we then started getting the established listeners. I think our brain trust group was formed. I think it was about January, February time, right? Yes, it was it? January. Yeah. And being part of that group, again, kind of gave me a bit of confidence because, you know, to be to feel that part of a, a group of peers who are doing great quality output as well, and that I'm part of them, it, it, you know, it made me think, well, yeah, there must be something I'm doing right. And then, yeah, just as you see, listeners sort of add on looking at the old map now because we moved um you know we've moved to uh, again thanks to you i've moved platform to to rss mm -hmm. you see the map and every time i see a new dot appear on there that's always a, a little exciting. bit of a yes, yeah it, it is <laughs> yeah yeah and it's just it's just when you do get that interaction you know it's 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 not it's not every episode but when somebody drops you a message or, or says something about something you've said in an episode it's like well if if I can, if I can make that one person think something specific or have them interact with us because they've heard something, whilst initially I, I'm thinking that's not, you know, I've got to remember I'm doing this because this is a fun thing for me to do, and I do enjoy, I really do enjoy doing this. The fact that I know people out there are listening, yeah, it's just, it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's just a great. But I, if you, if you just said this to me, not, you know, we've been going since what September uh 21 um mm -hmm. if you just said this to me sort of a few months earlier i, I would have said i would have laughed at you and said no i'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to be at this point so what have you got planned or what what's your i know we kind of touched upon it briefly in mac you know in our recent mcdonald's episode uh by the way that was another downer this week mcdonald's did resist all attempts at flirting i did i them on saw you were show. aggressive in your campaigning too but I even used to say anything, Gif. So, <laughs> but, you know, so we'll have to see what else we could do. But McDonald's, if you are listening or if anyone works for them, we're still here. OK. And we still want the South Korean menu in our restaurants <laughs> in the UK and in America. Have you got anything specific you want to do with any of your pods? Launch another one. Well, you know, and here's, I'm not going to launch another one. That's for sure. <laughs> like <laughs> I'll drop one and then launch another one. Uh, the, the idea right now is, and this has been the idea for the whole year. Cause you know me, I like to go, 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 but I also like to put a, a realistic expectation of myself. And the first realistic expectation I had for my first year was just the quality of the show. I'm recording in a spare bedroom that I converted into an office, that I converted into a studio that's partially sound treated, but for the most part, 
it's just a bedroom, really. It's just an empty room that I've turned this studio into. Yet, a lot of people comment on how well the show sounds and ask, what studio am I at? What office building am I at? Am I at a radio station? So getting that kind of recognition right from the, the start, once I updated my equipment and made things a little bit more easy with the audio, that was my first goal, was to sound like a podcast that had hundreds of thousands of dollars invested into it, but in a spare bedroom. So I've got you, that. That was the goal. You do. I have to say now, you have got, you, you, your podcast does sound brilliant. And I'm not just saying it because you, you're there now. We, you know, we kind of, I, I, I said it in your introduction in our recent collab. You've got one of the, the smoothest voices in podcasting. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is, like you said, the fact that you are doing it in the bedroom, it is, you know, for anyone thinking that, you know, you need the studio. No, just listen to your pods because they, they are they are top quality. Well, and that's why we were kind of like rallying against a lot of the podcasting gurus that mm. were out there early in the year saying, if you want to be taken seriously, you have to invest the money. You have to invest the time in your studio, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. And there's enough of us that sound great that prove that, that the gurus don't know everything. So if there was, a, I'd say, an accomplishment this year, it was the fact that we had a really great technical wizard in our brain trust, Leo J. Allen, of the podcast Voluntary Input, which is pretty much on hiatus right now. He really helped me capture the sound that I have right now for free. He did it for nothing. He was doing it out of the kindness of his heart and helping other independent podcasters where the gurus are like, hey, I'll do a free session for you, and then we're going to charge you hundreds of dollars to make you sound as good as I sound right fucking now. So the, the fact that there are people out there in the podcasting world that are truly out there to help others, we didn't know Leo, we didn't know Leo from anyone. And he yeah. came in, yeah. he was so gracious with his time and his knowledge. And I can tell you right now, I would not be where I'm at with this podcast if it wasn't for that guy. Yeah, absolutely. And I let me do it now. I do have some shout outs that I, I want to want to give because these people really have helped me and all the podcast at the same time. So I'm going to say it now because you're on. I want to say thank you to you because, yeah, you have helped me out a number of times. We've been on. You, you've given me two or three at least video calls where you've helped sort me out uh, some of the audio issues I was facing. And you've also done me a superb uh, subscription image <laughs> from you. time to time you're welcome so thank you to, yeah no thank you to you Kay from fuck my work life she did some artwork for me for our store special mention to josh wilson because his 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 music now intros and outros our podcast and i i love listening to that every time i have to listen to to the outro music in full every time when i'm editing <laughs> and kind of everyone else in 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 our group the support and the kind of the pushing that we give each other to help us achieve like uh, the, the consistent quality. So Justin from the Movie Wire, Josh from Talking Smack, Karen from a Sugar Coated. The next couple are on, as you mentioned, there's hiatus, but still thinking about them. And yeah, you've, you've helped me out as well more than you could probably imagine. So we've got, yeah, Leo from Voluntary Input, Brendan from Unshift and Matt from Decaying with the Boys. So I I don't think I've missed anyone out from our brain trust, have I? K and J. Oh, I said K for the artwork. No. I oh, yeah, K, you did. Yeah, I didn't That's right. You J. Did. I didn't mention <laughs> J, but I should say, yeah, J as well, because I appeared on their show. And that was brilliant because the episode was around half hour or so. So we spoke for about two hours afterwards. Right. It was just an amazing <laughs> conversation. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just fascinating. So I can't wait to work with them again. And there are loads more podcasts I want to say thank you to. I kind of won't because I know if I miss one out or I don't say someone, you know who you are. If you've interacted with us in any way, whether it's tweet, direct message, anything, thank you. Because honestly, it's that support that's, that's kind of, yeah, yeah, been going. But yeah, like you said, our little group has continued to push push ourselves to, to kind of keep on track and, and just stay positive, haven't we? Yeah. You know, and I'm so happy with just doing the audio medium and everyone right now is saying that the move is to push to video and YouTube. And I'm just not so sure how I feel about that yet, at least for my film podcasts. But my new show, The Milf and Me, 
me and my co-host Diana, if we're going to ever put a show on YouTube or on video, it's going to be that one because we are in studio together and there's an intimacy mm-hmm. there. I am not a huge fan, not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just am a hard time watching a Zoom meeting and to be entertained by it. You know, like if it's just four squares yeah. with faces talking to a camera. Yeah, I, I get it. People watch those. I would just rather listen to the podcast. But when there is an interpersonal dynamic where it's two co-hosts talking to each other on video, I like that better because you can see the chemistry between the hosts. So if I do go that direction, which is a goal for 2023, it would be the MILF and me pod that would be taking that next step. And, you know, you said about the rapport that Lou and I have got. I think one of the standout things from the MILF and me is, yeah, I mean, Diana, she sounds great. You know, it just sounds like such a fun person. And yeah, it's clear that you two have obviously got a good friendship there. And you can't, you can't buy that. You know what I mean? You can't manufacture, you can't fabricate that kind of relationship on, on a pod. And it really does help as a listener that it sounds like you are, list, you, you are kind of just amongst friends. I also feel like you're also listening to each other and watching each other and not just waiting for your turn to say something yeah. clever. Which sometimes, you know, you get that vibe when you listen to certain podcasts, and that's not a, necessarily a bad thing, but I'm not good at that. I, I like talking to people and listening to people too much, and I feel it, that would be lost on a video podcast of mine if it was just strictly a, a Zoom meeting and having just a bunch of squares look at each other, you know? But you know, what? and, and the funny thing is, on, on all this we just said, for me, the one thing, well, there's... There's three things I want to kind of do with the podcast and, uh, n- next year, and none of them are groundbreaking. Uh, but one is, you know, we are, what, 15 months into this, and Lou and I still haven't done an episode together in the same room. Yeah, I've noticed <laughs> yeah, that. We still, <laughs> we still haven't done that. So I would love to, to do that. Then building on that is I would actually love for me and him to do something on the road. So, you know, we've done episodes like the Bizarre Competitions, and a lot of them feature some regional things around England. I would love to go to one of those. And, yeah, maybe him and I do almost like a live report and outside broadcast on on one of these events. Um, So I'd like to do that. And the third thing is a personal one, is I kind of want to challenge myself to do a little bit more in like the art side of things because i just you know i'm relying on yourself and Kay to help me out with some of the artwork and i just feel like i look at i look at the promos on instagram that yourself justin uh, josh wilson uh, sugarcoat you know the the promos that go out i just love looking at them and i'm thinking i kind of want to just do that just to kind of take our pod to to a little bit of a next level yeah, I, I think it definitely helped with the the Twitter follows and the Instagram follows, and hopefully those do translate into listeners. But yeah, I, I think that is the, the biggest part of it. And I mean, as long as we're having fun, right? You know, exactly. I don't think you or I ever got into this to make any money. I mean, if anything, this was more of like a motivational thing. I've been trying to write a book about cult films for a long time. And my podcast sprung from my blog and my reviews on Letterboxd that I've had for years. The next step was a podcast. And the third step is I do want to write a book about cult film. And so I'm not sure if that's 2023, but the groundwork is there, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And well, we've seen recently with Sugar We've seen it with Sugar Coated Murder and they're click, click, click. Like, yeah, one of us in our group has already done it. And that's given me a lot of confidence to like, maybe this is the year I should pull that trigger, you know? So I'm saying, I'm, I'm aiming high, saying it now, 2027, the Casting Views film. Just, just be, prepared. <laughs> be prepared, okay? Do you, okay, prepared. do you want a film or do you want like a, a show, like uh, something on the BBC, a, a topical Casting Views show? I'd love a show. I, think, you know, I, I can imagine Lou and I like a late night, you know, late night chat show. I'd love I it. I think it should be animated. <laughs> <laughs> Or puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that, that'd be quite good. That'd be quite good. Yeah, kind of as we're drawing towards the end of the year. You, you yeah. said Christmas. You got any specific plans? I think you mentioned it, but is it is it just a, a kind of just recalibrate and recharge? Yeah, like the episode I'm putting out is really simple. It's just uh, uh, some suggestions for fun Christmas films to watch over the holiday. Then I have a New Year's Eve special coming out with Justin the following week. 
And then it's just back to normal, back to business as usual. But I've banked all these episodes, so I'm never like in a supreme rush. So anyone starting a podcast out there, that's my that's my advice to you. Unless you are a weekly podcast that is based on what happened that week, do yourself a favor and be three or four episodes ahead because someone always gets sick. Someone always <laughs> breaks their elbow. Are we talking about the same person here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. See if you could crack the code that <laughs> Daniel used to. It's, it's unbelievable, actually. It, the year has been punctuated by by illness, and, and like I said, we've mentioned it a couple of times. But yeah, you've actually you have been. You're you're the one of the common factors here, Antonio. Actually, because oh, yeah, Lou broke his yeah Lou broke his elbow the day we were due on your show. Correct. I had COVID when you came onto our show the first time. Oh, no. And now Lou is Lou is off tonight, and you've you've magically sort of been been free. So I think you've probably <laughs> sent a virus over to him. I'm over here with like voodoo dolls poking you guys and breaking <laughs> yeah. elbows and stuff, just because I want to be on your show because it's my favorite topical <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Bless you. Have you got any time off over Christmas? So you sort of. Oh know, no, no, I'm. And... I'm an idiot. I'm one of those people that I think I have almost 500 hours of vacation accrued because I just don't take time off. So that's one of the things that I'm going to, again, another New Year's resolution. Take some time off. <laughs> Hang out yeah, with the family. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's definitely yeah. something I could be better at. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working. Well, so we've got, so Christmas is Sunday, isn't it? So Christmas, we're going to be actually at Lou's house. All my family are going to be there. Then over here in the UK, we get Monday and Tuesday off. So we get Monday because Christmas Day and, and Boxing Day, the day after a class is bank holidays. If mm -hmm. if it falls at a weekend, you get the respective working day in the week. So we get Monday, Tuesday off. Outside of that, yeah, I'm kind of at work. So that's why I think I'm also taking a break for, from the podcast because I think, like yeah, I said, it's the most of it. a busy year. Yeah, it's a busy, busy time of year as well. It's a, it's a tiring time of year. Okay, I think wrap Excellent, up. Just man. wanted it to be a short sweet. Um, yeah, I loved it. So do you, plug your shows again. Uh, you know, and please do subscribe to all of Antonio's podcasts. But uh, any, anything you want to say before we go? You know, you actually hit the, the nail on the head right there. Uh, we have a lot of listeners because we see them in our numbers. My one ask, I guess my Christmas wish would be for... Anytime you listen to a podcast and you even somewhat enjoy it, even if it's not going to be something that you're going to listen to every week, you'd be doing the whole podcasting community a favor just by giving us a rating and hitting the subscribe button. You know, I used to roll my eyes at that when I'd listen to podcasts before I was actually podcasting. And now I know the importance of it. And, you know, a lot of us work hard. Some of us work harder on these things than maybe we should. And if there's one thing that is going to make us feel that accomplishment that we are reaching the world and we're reaching the people that we want to reach is to be able to see at least one review or one subscription each week. That's all we ask just to know that we are moving the needle forward. So I would say that would be an amazing Christmas gift to anyone who listens to podcasts or other podcasters that support and share people's works. If you haven't jumped onto their show, and hit subscribe or or giving them a rating, it's so easy and it really means so much. Yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. That that was what I was going to say. Is if anyone is feeling particularly festive, yes, press that subscribe button, leave a review, or even just drop us a, a note. It can be by DM or email. I mean, yeah, you know, when I do get a message, it's brilliant. And I and I and again, I've said to you a couple of times, haven't I? When I've seen we've got a new subscriber, I've messaged you and said we've got another subscriber, or we've hit you know hit this amount of downloads. It's you know none of us, especially in the indie podcast world. None of us, like, as you've alluded to, we're not in huge mega corporate studios. We're not. Nope. We're not retired already. You know, this is this is a passion of, or, or it's a uh, yeah, it's a, it's it's, a, it's something that we've got a passion for. And my partner, I probably see less of her now because she, you know she. I, I walk in, and she goes, "You you doing your pod?" I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> you know, so oh, no. you'd be making that. You'd be validating the fact that that we're doing something good with it at least. But yeah, if. Even if it's yeah. not ours, you know, reach out to someone. I, I've done that a couple of times. I've I've listened to a random pod and I've messaged them just to say, look, you know, you don't know me, but I just want to say I've listened to a show of yours and I think it's brilliant. Yeah. You know, it's that's how I've been getting my guests over the last year. 
So, yeah. Well, thank you for having me on, my friend. It's been great. No, cheers for coming on, stepping in. Lou, I know you're listening. Get well soon. <laughs> get well soon, Lou. <laughs> yeah, I, we need to do another show, your World Cup prediction review. So get you better get well soon. And we're having a beer on Sunday. And yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to everyone. And yeah, we'll see you for a proper episode in the yeah first couple of weeks of January. Take it easy, all. Goodbye. I know. Hold on. No, you see, you've distracted me by having a guess. We know there's a lot of podcasts for which you could choose. So we thank you for listening to Casting Views. Almost forgot our own ending. Two, three, four. If I want your opinion, I will give it to you. Come on, take what we've got, because you need it.